How's it going, everybody? Once again, it's the Front Runner Football Podcast as uh, we now recollect on what's been happening since the last time you joined us on the podcast. It's only been about uh, 72 or so hours since uh, I last convened with my panel, which is made up of John T. Mark, Eddie Dinya, and Mazola Mulepe. Good evening, gents. Welcome. Uh, trying something new today so that we're not racing and hurtling towards saying goodbye. Um, Let's see how it goes. But thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and let's, I guess, start with some of the big news of the day. Um, I'm not even going to ask you if there's been any word from this meeting that happened today. But uh, we'll maybe end with that. But Nazola, one of the big stories, of course, is the return of the prodigal son in Rulani Mukwena returning to Mamilodi Sundowns. Um, you had alluded to this, and now it's kind of been confirmed. Take us through how this started. And... Um, yeah, who approached who in this instance? Yeah, look, uh, I can't, I can't say really when when it started. I'm not, I'm not too sure myself. You know, mm. I was, I was just given, given the in, information. You know, I think <clears throat> uh, a, a day or so ago uh, that that the coach would be sort of making some some movements post uh, his short, very brief cheaper spell uh but at the time i you know i wasn't made aware of of, of a possible return to my melody sundowns i only knew that he had offers that he was sort of uh you know uh looking at and and contemplating and and, and i think it by then you know people had already you know there already been several reports alluding to the fact that he's not going back to orlando pirates because as we remember just as as his cheaper contract came to an end on the 30th of June, so did his Orlando Pirates contract. Um, uh, but I think that maybe there were some people who were still hoping he would go back to Orlando Pirates, but that would have been complicated given that, you know, reportedly he he, he did not see eye to eye with Joseph uh, Zinbauer. Uh, and then I think, yeah, as as things were moving at, ve- at, at a very frantic pace, I was alerted to to the fact that he may very well be in fact, not he may very well, but he is actually going to to Mamelodi Sundowns and has has signed has signed a contract to return as an assistant coach to 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 Pizzo Musimani alongside uh, Mango Bagniti. If you remember, uh, Rulani was never really sort of replaced. You know, uh, Coach Pizzo uh, elevated uh, goalkeeper coach Wendell Robinson to to you know to being to having a dual role, so to speak, as a goalkeeper coach. And still being one of the three, uh, uh, one of the two assistant coaches. But in fact, Mango Bamniti remained the only sort of first uh, first assistant coach at the club in the three years that Rulani was was away at Orlando Pirates, and subsequently the three months he spent at Chipa United. Look, people are questioning whether it's a great move or whatever. Uh, you know. <laughs> I, I would personally would have loved to see Rulani take take on a head coaching uh, job because, you know, uh, not only have the media hyped him up so much, but so has his colleagues. You know, your Gavin Hunt, Stuart Baxter, Pito Simani, Mango Bamniti, those who've worked with him, Steve Compella, uh, to name a few, have have said that he's the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> <laughs> if, if if I can put it like that and many of us would love to see we know that he's had approaches before Pulukwane City wanted him some some time ago and he opted not to he did get an opportunity to obviously coach Orlando Pirates for about 14 15 games uh that spell was sort of topsy-turvy depending on who, who you speak to uh and maybe he decided he still maybe wants to learn under coach Pito yeah. Musimani and you know see if he can he can move uh, a step further after that, you know. So, 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 so. Let, let, let's see. I personally would have loved to see him take on a head coach job, but then again, in this economy as well, you know, if 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 you have, you know, a billion a billionaire owner knocking on your door offering you a job, I know I don't know the figures. I don't know how much Rulani stands to 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 to, to pocket monthly uh, as an assistant coach at Mamelodi Sundowns, but I would imagine. <laughs> I would imagine at Mamelodi Sundowns, it's a, it's a pretty decent uh, salary, po- possibly yeah. even more than being a head coach at any of the, 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 the local PSL clubs. 
Well, there we go, Eddie. I mean, I guess with that in mind, the fact that the economics were probably great. Uh, but I mean, is this uh, almost an accepting or you know of defeat by Rolani that you know this foray into him being a head coach was rather short lived, and so much has happened since the beginning of the season. Assistant to Micho, he takes over the job at Pirates, can't get them up and running. His replacement in Zimbabwe comes in gets them to set the world alight. He goes off to Chipa, doesn't have much of an impact. COVID comes into the picture. Now he leaves them. Then he goes full circle back to being an assistant coach again at a club with the means and the ability to win a lot of things. How would you sum up this journey of his? <clears throat> oh, wow. Um, three chefs again in the kitchen. Uh, you know, Pito, Rulani, and uh, Manova. I think... I mean, it, it tells you how uh, serious uh, uh, Pito really wanted uh, uh, Rulani. Mm. I think because they worked together before and he knows exactly what Rulani can do to the team. And chances, chances for Sundowns to win the league, still, uh, still 100%. So I think for him, uh, bringing him to, to Sundowns, he knows exactly what he wants. I think as for, as for Rulani, I mean, you know, I was actually thinking about it that when he was at Pirates, Okay, uh, I don't know whether he didn't do well or the players did not perform. Because if you look at it, the same players that Roland was using mm -hmm. is the same players that this current coach is using. Yeah, so exactly. now you can ask yourself questions where the players really wanted to play for Rulani or there was something wrong with what Roland was doing. But you know what? All the players, they would know exactly what was going on. So we can wait now and see what, uh, what's going to happen. Whether now is it about money or he still wants to be under Pizzo Mosemani or both, we don't know. So we just have to wait and see what, uh, what's the next step for, for Rulani. Yeah, I mean, it's not uh, a bad uh, recruitment to make, John T, uh, to have this brains trust going into these last fixtures of the season just to give you that edge um, and have, you know, like we're saying, the three musketeers, I guess, rounding up again to, to essentially mount a credible challenge to Kaiser Chiefs' position at the top of the table? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a win-win for Sundowns and Mokwena, certainly. He goes back into familiar surroundings where he's won league titles, he's won um, the Champions League. Um, so it won't be difficult for him, although it will be that everyone's adapting to these, these strange times. <laughs> it won't be difficult for him in terms of um, even some of the personnel will still be there. Um, you know, and, and obviously he's worked with Ben Corban with um, Pizzo before, so he'll be quite settled there, I think. Um, and we did, I mean, look, I've been fairly critical of Rolani's stint at Pirates as head coach. I mean, he didn't do very well. Um, I thought his team was defensively naive. I know he's he's seen as a very, very good coach, and, and I think he, he has a, rec a very, very good record as an assistant coach. Um, and maybe in another, in another time he'll come back as a head coach and and and, and actually um, achieve more. Um, but for now, it had, didn't really work out for him at Pirates in the end, um, certainly not as a head coach. Um, he did okay alongside Micho for a couple of seasons. Um, but, um, yeah, obviously, it doesn't seem to get along with Zimbao, whether it's the way Zimbao coaches, whether it's just a thing of he didn't really want to be an assistant after being head coach at Pirates. But when he uh, moving back to Sundowns, it, he does move into a position he's used to, and some had some coaches are just better suited to being assistants and serve serve an extremely good role and do an extremely good job as assistant coach. And you know, there's no reason he can't emulate what he achieved previously with Sundowns, which is helping them win the league title, even if he stays on until next season, helping them um, in the Champions League. I think. Um, you know, it's a good move for him. And as Mazzola mentioned, in these times, any job you can get is a good job. And certainly a job paid by Sundowns is one of the better paid jobs in the country, I would think. I guess, yeah, no. Um, so Mazzola, is he better suited to being an assistant? As John T has um, alluded. <laughs> uh, look, it's a difficult one because I, I would assume he, he, at some point, he really does want to become... Uh, head coach. I mean, he's he's 33 years old, you know, uh, mm -hmm. believe it or not, you know. Um, so I think there's still, you know, a lot of growth uh, to, 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 to take place there. And look, I, I like I said, I would have loved to see him as a head coach. So obviously I'm, I'm, I'm a bit critical of him becoming 
uh, an assistant coaching. Leaders are uh, right, isn't it? I mean, you know, usually when there's someone's head on the chopping chopping block, it's not the assistants. So it's, yeah, it's, that's the thing. Kind of, you know, you know uh, responsibility. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so maybe, may, maybe <laughs> that's the decision behind it. I don't know. Maybe he decided. You know, I've been, I've been in the spotlight uh, for 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 some time now. First, as interim head coach. At, Orlando Pirates and it, then again at Chipa. Although at Chipa, you know, obviously let, let's let's be let's be fair mm. uh, and and call it what it is. It it, it was uh, a stint that didn't have he couldn't have much of an impact. It was sure. one game. He was there for three months and then COVID happened and the contract ended and he walked away. You know what I mean? So you you couldn't even necessarily put that Chipa spell in his in his CV necessarily. Mm. You know because there's not enough. There's not there's not enough proof or evidence of of what work he was doing there because he only got to coach uh, uh, one game and then we found ourselves in this uh, current uh, climate. So look, maybe the idea is to go back to to Mamelodi Sundowns and learn again, you know, and kind of do it from the beginning. And look, Coach Pito, I've, I've had an interview with Coach Pito before, just just as Rulani was appointed uh, Chipa United coach. I asked Coach Pito for his comments on Rulani going to Chipa and I asked him whether it, it, it would be okay if Rulani ever were to become an assistant again and Coach Pito said look he decided he would become an assistant again I don't see anything wrong with it he's still very young he's <clears throat> you know he's the new uh, generation as Rulani himself has, has, has described he's the technocrat of, 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 of football and sort of him and Fadlu at the time were trying to lead young SA football uh, coaches uh, forward so maybe he's he's gone back like you said come full circle and trying to realign reset and see where that takes him because i mean i did also do a story that you know uh, i was i was led to believe that rulani had offers from black leopards amazulu and township rollers and Ghana fc in, in, in zambia my 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 thing there is that you know you know how much how much I, look i don't want to make it a purely a, a financial thing right, but right look but I'll still go back to it. If Mutipe is knocking on your door, uh, you know, <laughs> and those two clubs, uh, one one of them having had salary cuts, you know, Mutipe just about guarantees you your paycheck <laughs> for however many years that you're going to work for him. Uh, Amazulu have had have had pay cuts. They top and change coaches like crazy. Black Leopards, not I haven't heard of any pay cuts, but they've had four coaches, I think, in just this season alone. So yeah. there you go. I mean, to uh, Mazola's point, um, Eddie, is it just, you know, goes to show the lack of um, interesting projects that exist for potentially coaches or assistant coaches, you know, is that you, you actually don't, as much as you might be spoiled for choice in inverted commas with what's coming in, what you can really only take seriously ends up being one, if not two max teams. Yeah, it's it like it's true, like uh, what uh, Mazola has been saying, uh, because I mean it's not every club that uh, that every coach wants to go and uh, be the head coach. They, I think, there are other clubs that, I mean, we all know that some of these uh, owners of the clubs, you know, when there is a coach, they kind of interfere for sure with uh, yeah with the coaches. So I think right. as for Rulani, I think going back to Sundowns. Um, and I had spoken to some of the players when he left the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they were like, no, you know, he was good to us. He has been the best and uh, we're really going to miss him. Mm -hmm. So it shows that listen, they wanted someone like Rulani to be, to be in the team. So when you, now that he's back with the team, I think for the, for the players, I think it's going to be great for them because they, he was someone that they wanted to, uh, uh, to have in the team someone that they trusted mm -hmm. someone who knows exactly what each and every player was going through I mean if you look at how he does things all the players were very happy and everybody was wanted to to play for sundowns as now I think as I said you know the three chefs are back together now so I think it, we're going to see some hopefully some amazing things but now to Mazola's point right that he is quite a young coach at the age of 33 mm -hmm. you having been a player do you think that had a big part of like the lack of him being able to connect with those players? Is it hard for a player when you're looking at someone who's maybe only four or five years older than you trying to tell you what to do? 
I mean, you know, now that Mazzola brought up that he's only 33, was he all, all, almost doomed from the start to be trying to take charge of a dressing room where some players are even older than him? I think it, is, it, it has to do with the respect. I mean, if you, are a, if you are a player, then he's a coach. So you need to forget about who's older, who's younger. I think yeah, you I mean, to respect. We clearly saw that that didn't happen in that, well, like we said, the results under him and the results under Zimbabwe, same personnel. Yeah, see, now that's, that's where I'd say to you uh, before that I don't understand now whether, whether the players really wanted to, to play for Rulani mm -hmm. or was it Rulani putting in some bad tactics or what was happening. I don't understand because the same players that Rulani was using is the same players that the current coach of Pirates is using and they are playing some beautiful, beautiful games. So now you can ask yourself a question, okay, what's going on here? Right. Was Rulani being fair to the players? Mm -hmm. Or, because it's always, you know, you're going to be, okay, is it the players? Was it uh, 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 Rulani? So now you really don't know exactly what was going on because it doesn't matter whether the coach is old or the coach is young, mm -hmm. but as long as you respect, then everything goes well. So okay. if he did it when he was at Sundowns and then he came to Pirates and then it didn't happen, then you ask questions, like, okay, what was going on? Well, that's the thing, is that the circumstances are different, right? Is that he was an assistant, whereas the, the, the person in the hierarchy there was Coach Pizzo. So the players are essentially, you know, dealing with him mostly. The assistants are there, but that's the main touch point. Whereas when he's moved out of the position of being an assistant to being a head coach, did his age have anything to do with the fact that he couldn't get that dressing room to buy into whatever he was doing, essentially? Now, I don't think now, now, now here comes now me saying, okay, mm -hmm. did he fail when he was at Pirates? Mm -hmm. Now, because, you know, when you're a coach, you came with your tactics, you, you come with how you want your players to, to, to play, yeah, you, yes. can, yeah, every, you know, everything else. So right. when you start now being coaching them and telling them what you need to do, if the players don't respond to that, then it becomes a problem. So all the players, they wait for you, for the coach to say, okay, this is how we're going to play. This is how we're going to attack. This is how we're going to defend. And then if they don't apply that in the, in the field of play, then that's going to be a problem. So now being the players that Rulan were coaching and now they're playing for the current coach. Mm -hmm. And is it the touches that are different or is it because the players, they didn't res respect him? I guess we'll never know. That's a strange one. I mean, I guess we'll never know, but uh, it is food for thought, guys. Um, as, uh, yeah, I'm sure people will formulate their own decision as to who was the weak uh, strut in that structure as far as uh, Rolani's time at Pirates was concerned. Okay, let's keep it moving to um, Dr. Tulani Nguyenya, who's kind of been speaking, uh, John T, in terms of just saying that if it was up to him, we'd only be playing football in level one. Now, that's not a bad thing because obviously, you know, you start thinking, okay, cool, level one is what we're all working towards. Except it seems now with the amount of cases on the go, we might actually have to ratchet things up or the going down is going to slow down. So what, what, what's, 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 what's going on? What's he saying? I mean, that's his wish, but I'm guessing there's people um, who are going to want to fight that. Yeah, I mean, look. All of this is really making me increasingly want to smack my head against a brick wall because it's like every time <laughs> the PSL try and make a step forward, Safa seem to come in with some sort of statement that suggests that, you know, it, that, that tries to slow it down again or that throws a spanner in the wheel. And, you know, we've seen teams are back at training. Um, in theory, it's all going forward. There was another meeting, uh, another PSL meeting today. Um, frankly, I've given up expecting a statement. Um, from the PSL because you know every time you, you they said you think there's going to be one there isn't they never say anything um, on one hand I guess they're trying to are waiting until they have a definitive definitive answer for us on when the season is going to start again <laughs> on another it's very frustrating the lack of information coming out of the PSL which we've touched on a million times here but you know it's worth mentioning again because you know they need to you know, one would like more clarity from them. And the, at the same time, obviously, you've got... And that's why when you get someone like the Chief Medical Officer for Safa, Tulani and Gwenya, who spoke very clearly previously about the plan that has been put in place um, <clears throat> and the detailed plan and the fact that if it goes into a bubble, it'll be 99% certain that um, 
you know, if it, as long as everybody, everybody complies, it'll be 99% certain that the virus won't, there won't be another outbreak within the bubble. When you get something like that, and then him, you know, doing an interview where he sort of says if it was up to him, he'd go back to level one. It kind of, um, you know, it's a bit, it makes you a bit downhearted uh, in the sense that, as you mentioned, we're not heading, we don't seem to be heading for level one anytime soon. Um, right. But teams are training. Um, if you look at what's physically happening, um, and there are a lot of teams cleared for training. Um, so whether or not, you know, Safa's, Safa's last statement was also a, absolutely bizarre for me because they they came out and they said we have Jelani and Gwenya and another gentleman as the medical officers and we've got the protocol from the government and the way they spoke was if was as if nobody had even started training yet and they still you know almost just trying to almost say we you know we're in charge of the yeah you'll hear from us <laughs> we're in charge of the situation here and um yeah it needs to come through us and um yeah this is this is what's happening when you know you've already seen teams training and and We've seen the PSL appointing their own compliance officer, and you know it is it is again a, a unnecessary sort of political squabbling that seems to be going on between the two bodies. Um, I do get the impression that the PSL are working hard to try and get the season finished, but again, Safa do control the refs. Um, you know, it still needs you know government have, have given go ahead to start training again. You know, under these circumstances, but you know it could change. Um, and I think, you know, the, the Federation sovereign would need to be on board with it. Um, so it's it's a little bit frustrating when you when you think you've made two steps forward and then you find yourself perhaps taking a couple more back. Mm. But at the moment, like, if you look at the pure physical evidence, clubs are training, getting ready to finish the season, and hopefully we can finish the season. And I still am of the understanding that they want to get the season done by the end of August. Okay, I mean, Mazola, looking at that situation, I'm sure Safa are looking at it and saying, well, look, guys, you know, we're just reacting to what's happening in the country, uh, what's in the best interest of the people as far as the health situation, with things considerably in certain regions and uh, part of the, parts of the country getting worse. So, you know, I guess they'll always kind of say, we're just kind of standing behind the facts. Yeah, yeah. Uh... I'm going to get to a point where I plead the fifth on, on, on this topic <laughs> moving forward because, uh, yeah, four, four, four months later, um, still, you know, it's doing my it's doing my head in. Like, yeah. you know, uh, four months later, twice a week, you know, we revisit this topic. And, and <laughs> I, I, quite frankly, I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I have no comment. <laughs> Because I mean, um, you know, the, 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 is the fifth. <laughs> he is pleading the fifth, but I'm gonna have to engage him with him and say, listen, um, there's a lot of things. I mean, just with those uh, biologically safe environments, you yeah. know, to get those going and to make sure that the people covering the sport on top of it, they're not also bringing anything into that bubble. I mean, I, I honestly, those two compliance officers have. They work um, cut out for the Mr. Name being the other one. Um, but yeah, I mean, how do you, it's, it's a huge, huge undertaking. And yeah, look, come the, the, the reality is that, you know, some teams are testing, some mm. teams are not testing. Mm. So if, if you've, as, 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 as we reported on, 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 on Saturday evening, that there's a proposal to, to restart the league on, on, on the 19th of July, you mm. know, and we discussed it on here on Monday that that just seems, uh, too close, uh, right. but reali the reality is that teams do want to start, they want to get going, you know, uh, you can see even with uh, how quickly some of them uh, sent in compliance documents and were given the approval to start training, they are ready to go, yeah. players have, have been sitting have been sitting on their backsides uh, for four months, I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine Eddie during his playing time, sitting, doing nothing for four months, what what that would have done to his 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 mental strength and and just his 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 fitness overall, you know. Yeah. So the reality is, clubs are raring to go. Uh, they feel they are losing money the longer it takes for them to return to playing. And then you have the suffer situation. And the other reality, in as far as testing and and this bio bubble and whatever, is that you are going to have situations where teams go into matches without some of their key players. I, mm. I'm talking to you now, there are some teams that have, you know, five, six players in isolation. Right. You know, because they've either been in contact with someone who's contracted the disease or, or, or someone who, who actually has 
has the virus mm. and they've been placed in isolation. So now if you're saying, if you're saying the game uh, kicks off on the 19th or 18th of July, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's in, in, in another week yeah. and a half, two yeah. weeks, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and you know, in 10 days time, whoever has gone in isolation this week possibly would not have completed that isolation. So you can't, you could, you, you can have, can you imagine Mamelodi Sundowns, uh, Pirates, Chiefs, whoever, the title mm-hmm. chasers mm-hmm. going into, into, into an important game without six of their key players not for because sure. they are in isolation, you know? So, no. What kind of what? What do you expect there? So if you, my thing is, and I'm no expert on this, but you know, it's it's all from just uh, having being being reporting on this now for four months. Mm. Is that if you're gonna go into a bio, bio bubble, you need to give it some time. You need to have players tested and then go into that bio bubble and give it a few a few days, not not ten days. If if the isolation period is is fourteen days, and you're saying go straight into the bio bubble. You know, you're gonna have situations where people have been tested and they've they've either got the, the virus or they need to go into isolation. So they're ineffectively going effectively going to to be unavailable for those games. So I don't know how this is all gonna work. It's just to be honest, it's really just doing my head in. I I can't anymore. <laughs> I feel you. Our frustration has been palpable on the show for all the weeks that we've been speaking about this, Eddie. Um, it just seems that there's no resolution in sight, and um, you know that's a good point player personnel um if they get compromised because it's not just the quarantine it's getting them up to fitness after the quarantine so you could essentially have people seasons end with a diagnosis of uh getting covid especially with a yeah. shirt around we've got to to wrap the season up yeah that's true i mean like what uh Mazola said that uh, listen we need to, to we need to play the games and we need to finish the season and now Everybody, every club is being told that okay, we might uh, resume uh, the league on the 19th, hmm. and then so the the coaches and uh, the technical staff they are all preparing for the game on the 19th, and then boom, the next minute the game the games are not going to be played. So now you wait and then see exactly what's going to happen. When are we going to play the games again? And also now that like uh, Mazola has said, listen, you have your best players, and then now they uh, tested positive, and then what are you going to do? Now you're gunning for the league. Now you're going to the game without uh, most of your 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 original players. And now you have to now start again, getting other players to 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 fit in the team. And okay, for a Sundowns, it's a team that has got enough depth. What about the other teams that that don't, that don't even have? Like yeah. now you're playing in the, the 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 first game without most of your players. And then what do you do? Now you you forced now to take some of the players. Who are not even playing, and now you, they they have to play. Mm. Now you end up losing games. And I said it again the last time when we met that: uh, Are we really going to see uh, uh, beautiful football? I don't know. I don't know. We 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 have to wait and see that. Yeah, I mean, it, it strikes me at this stage that guys are just going to be playing these games to almost just get them out the way and be done with this by now, uh, John T. I think you know we, we're just going to see. A strange brand of football. I don't know what to anticipate, but I don't think it's going to be anything uh, uh, like we're used to. We're going to possibly see um, you know, situations, as the gentleman mentioned, where players, um, you know, where players are missing from teams. Um, it's going to be obviously behind closed doors, which will create a weird atmosphere. Anyway, um, be interesting to see what sound effects SuperSport employ on the television. Um, when they're showing these games, will they use kind of the template? Will we hear? Will we hear the Vuvuzelas blaring um, wow. out? That'll be good fun. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be odd. Um, I I see this date July nineteenth as being been mentioned, and I just almost fall off my chair. How are you going to be ready? Going to happen? I don't see July nineteenth. Um, it might have been the intention. Now. I find it very unlikely. Uh, and it, obviously, with every passing day, it's more and more unlikely. Mm. I mean, you have to have every team ready. Every team compliant. You've got Safa sort of still sort of, you know, smudging the process. I think the situation is, you know, that clubs need to get going for economic reasons, um, mm. for financial reasons, for the livelihoods of the clubs, for the livelihoods of the employees and the players. And, you know, all those things. We need to get football up and running again. Um, but there is a health crisis and infection rates are on the rise. And also, you know, the suggestion, obviously, it looks like how Teng, um, from what I read today, um, 
is the base. Um, Hao Teng is the one that's going, you know, the, where the infections are going off the chart at the moment. Exactly. Um, so that also seems a little illogical. Um, obviously, you need a you need a location where you can get all the games in, and and with the last two weeks being played simultaneously, you need a location with a decent amount of venues. But it seems like a bit crazy. Um, yeah, I, I just I just I just think by by you know having Houting as as where the bio hub is is just playing into Safa's hands, really. You know, mm -hmm. you are playing into Safa's hands. Here is Safa. Have been saying for four months that you know we are going to uh, to only play football when we reach level one. Yeah, and then you you go and say the epicenter <laughs> of of this virus is going to be where your bio bubble like is. It's level just, five. You just the epicenter. Level yeah, five, and then you want to yeah, have a you, type event. You are play. You are definitely playing into their hands. I mean. Yeah, <laughs> let's see how that works out. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, is, how much truth is there to the fact that you know um, parts of the country or certain municipalities have been bidding to to host these games? And I mean, surely that shouldn't even be a way of picking this thing. It should be based on um, the the medical credentials of a venue to be able to safely host the games and the people who are going to be participating in them. Yeah. Yeah, you've yeah, well, you've you've had yeah. Sorry, John T. Go ahead. No, I'm, I I mean you have to. You can't. I mean, obviously, a bidding process makes you assume that there's some sort of financial gain for for the PSL from this, um, from the city having the right to host or a municipality having a right to host. Mm. But yeah, like you say, you can't. It's better to use the safest environment. One would think. I mean, but obviously they have to be enough venues. So if you say, like for example, the Limpopo province. Is probably the safest province in terms of the virus outbreak. Uh, yeah. There aren't enough venues there. Sure. I mean, there are. Um, so it, it's a KZN or it's a Gauteng um, that you're looking at if you're going to find enough venues. And it could be a mix of venues, and maybe they've just decided well, it's better to have it all concentrated in one location. However prevalent the virus is in that location, we must just do all we can to keep it out. Um, so I guess that that would be my. <laughs> logic that I would put behind the decision. But yeah, like Mozilla did mention, they are kind of playing into Saf's hand because Saf can go, well, I mean, everything in this this region is, is primed for a coronavirus outbreak. You know, you can't yeah. possibly play football. Um, while, yeah. while referees don't feel safe in this environment. Our referees don't feel safe in this environment. And we need to, um, you know, um, yeah. And so you can't have any of our referees, PSL, sorry, use your own referees. Uh, For sure. Oh, or, gosh. Oh, you know, I, I think ultimately government maybe must step in and, t and say, look, you, can, you two children stop squabbling, um, you know, get, get out on the field and finish the season. I don't know, guys. I don't, hopefully, maybe by the next podcast, we will know what happened today and we'll have a way forward. It has to happen sometime. That's the thing about it, is that Mazola eventually we have to hear yeah. from them. Of course. I mean, if, uh, if, if football is going to kill, I, I don't see a scenario where we just see a game live on Supersport without ever getting a statement. I mean, it's possible. I mean, it's possible. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we, are, we are where we are today, four months no later, statement. there's been no. no statement. So, I wouldn't rule out the fact that we might just see football appear on a, on a, on a, on a Saturday afternoon. Where, where, when is the 19th of July? The it's, it's a Sunday. The 18th and 19th of July is next weekend. So, mm -hmm. you know, don't be surprised if, if you just get a fixture schedule from, from Super Sports saying PSL is back and you still have, haven't heard a word from, from, mm -hmm. from the hierarchy or the league itself via a statement but but i'm hoping i'm wrong i'm hoping i'm wrong i'm hoping we there's some kind of leadership shown and there's there's a statement instead of me and john t you know harassing the psl acting ceo at every turn for a mm -hmm. comment just release a statement you know mm -hmm. if you're gonna tell me and john t the same thing why don't just you release the statement if you're gonna tell us the same thing you know i just sure. i just don't it, it just it really does boggle the mind why there's just been silence and and you you will constantly get speculation which which isn't necessarily that's not what you want you want to control the narrative you know so i don't understand 
you know, the idea that not saying anything for four months is is your way of controlling the narrative. I just, I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, in terms of hot takes, I guess uh, Tlo Sikhalela is one who came through um, with his hot take, uh, Eddie, saying that, hey, let's just, you know, make the season null and void. Let's scrap it. Let's, you know, <laughs> time's running out. People are getting disgruntled. People don't know what to do with themselves anymore. Players are losing motivation. I mean, this is a strange thing is that we've come so far that we're actually forced to just see it through now. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> I think I think yeah for to uh, most of the teams, uh, especially we're talking about Sundowns and uh, and uh, KZ Chiefs. I mm. think they would want to 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 finish the the season because listen you as as much as you play well this season and you next season it's a different season again. So you might not be uh, uh, in a better position to be on the top of the log or right. even on the second or even in the top four because yeah. every season changes. You know. Teams buy new players, of which now we don't even know when is the uh, uh, transfer period is going to happen. As long as they, they, they prolong this, then we don't know when the, season, the next season is going to start, when is this going to end, how long now is going to be the transfer window period, mm. when are the teams going to, 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 to things, start buying players. And others, they need to import players again to come and have trials. We don't know. So, but I would say, let's just finish the game. Let's just set a date. Mm. And then let all the teams play, and then let, let's have a winner. And then we also need to have teams that needs to be relegated because it's not fair, honestly, for a team that is NFG that have played their heart out mm. that wants to get promoted to the PSL. Mm. So now, if we say okay, let's call it quits, and then we are not going to play this uh, this season anymore, then what happens to to th- those teams? As I said, listen, once you play this season, you you are not guaranteed that you're going to play again the next season, the way that you did this season. So I would say, let's go ahead. Let's set a date. Let's play the games. And then if you get relegated, get relegated, get promoted, get promoted. And then if you win the league, and then let's, let's do that. Hashtag announce dates. I think I want to take to Twitter with that one, Mazola. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. That's the point in time. Yeah, we're all waiting blindly in the dark for some leadership and some guidance. Um, the money men, the money league is being exposed at the moment for just not being able to show any sense of leadership and, 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 and direction. And it's quite disheartening to see, but hey, maybe they'll silence us by hosting a good and ex- expansive month of um, football when they get going again. Let's, you know. We... I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so negative. No, no, no. Hang in there. I doubt it. Hang in there. Let's I see. I, yeah, I mean, honestly, the, the timing in terms of the... Uh, increase in cases being reported and the need for football there's it's a huge salad that's being made and i don't know if we're gonna like the taste of it but we'll find out soon enough well, i guess the Gentlemen. times live report today basically mm. saying that their proposal today was that they um obviously this is frustrating because we don't get official statements from the psl we have to phone members of the bog for what they said in the meetings but anyway Mark Strayden and Machlatsim Pachlele, very respected journalists, have written basically that um, they're scrapping the Glad Africa. They're, they're thinking about scrapping the Glad Africa Championship completely, um, but they want to finish the ABSA Premiership. But in scrapping the Glad Africa Championship, wow. they will promote Ajax Cape Town because they won the league effectively, and then Swallows and Utongati, I think it is, will be in the playoffs with whoever finishes 15th in the ABSA Premiership. Um, and then they want to start it on July 19th. That's apparently so freeze the NFD as is. Effectively, the NFD yeah, frozen. No yeah. relegation from the NFD, so nobody goes right. down. So, Jomo Cosmos, whoever's bottom of the NFD, have a lifeline there. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is all in this article. So, yeah, that's the latest in those two. Um, you know, it's probably what happened at the meeting. It's almost certainly going to be what happened at the meeting because they are Oof. the journalists. So. <laughs> um, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Court battles lo- uh, loading. I don't yeah, know. I guess so. I uh, guess so. Bias, yeah. well, what's his name? Um, the, the owner of um, Aria Stefio, at least, will be yeah. happy. He won't sue anyone. Is he? For sure. For sure. I uh, guess you know, actually you have to have money to sue if you want to sue. So there's mm. that as well. Mm. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay.
guys, um, we're all on board. <laughs> this oh, train wow. looks like it's a it's about to crash in slow motion. <laughs> but yeah, brace yourselves. Let's see. Maybe by the time we meet on Monday again, we'll have more clarity. I've probably said that 10 times now. Um, and it's not been the case, any of them. But yeah, if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again, they say. Woo-wee. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for your time. That was uh, short and sharp. Really appreciate your impressions. We'll do it again in a few days' time. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Thank you, guys. And thank you to you for tuning in to the Front Runner Football Podcast. Uh, still no sense of when exactly football is going to begin. This magical date of the 19th being bandied about, that's 10 days away, strikes me as far too soon for anything to happen. Um, but hey, stranger things have happened. Let's see how it pans out. Thanks you for tuning in. We'll catch up in the new week. Until then, look after yourselves. Be safe, stay indoors, and uh, sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Ciao for now.